Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to last section of inventory. Um, we have section seven, which is kind of very interesting uh, section, um, covering a few good things that it's important in counting and uh, it's related to the, how to calculate the inventory value at the end of the uh, year and uh, understanding the net realizable value. So uh, in order to uh, learn this, just so you know, recently, not recently, like a few years uh, ago, it was older method of uh, lower of cost or inventory, but uh, <clears throat> lower of cost or market. But now the market calculation, it's based on net realizable value. And net realizable value is uh, this rule, net realizable value is same as IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard. So kind of uh, US GAAP uh, copied the same rule that uh, IFRS is using. And uh, that is the lower of cost or net realizable value. What it means is, uh, companies, they need to understand that, uh, okay, we have some inventory left at the end of the year, but what is the exact value of this inventory? For example, if you have <clears throat> an inventory that it's not popular anymore, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, for example, you have an electronic inventory, electronic units, whatever electronic uh, equipment you have, you are selling, but that electronic equipment nowadays is kind of out of uh, out of fashion. No one is using that, but you have it. So do you think the actual inventory value is still the same as whatever you purchased that? Obviously not because it's not popular anymore. No one wants it anymore. So the inventory that you have has less value. Make sense? So it's not fair that you say, oh, this value is the same as whatever I purchased. No, it is less. So that's the point. Here says the you go with the valuation of your inventory based, based on whichever is lower. The lower of the cost that you paid for that equipment, like electronic inventory, whatever you have, uh, or the net realizable value of that equipment. Okay, what is the net realizable value? Net realizable value is expected sales at that moment, less disposal cost. That's the net realizable value. That means the net amount that you will realize after selling. So, okay, so, what is disposal cost? Disposal cost is what it takes you to get rid of that inventory. Maybe a little bit of shipping, let's say offering free shipping to you to your uh, clients or to your customers. Uh, maybe uh, uh, paying higher commission to your salespeople. Anything that needs extra push to sell that inventory. That's the disposal cost. That means you have to pay that no matter what, extra provision or extra shipping or whatever. So now look at this example. In uh, problem number one, we have the recorded cost of the inventory we have, inventory A, B, C, D, E, F, different inventories. And they have different costs, okay? Normally you like to say, oh, I have this many units, that's why, uh, this is my cost. Yes, but based on uh, no lower of cost or net realizable value, uh, you have to see if what is the actual uh, lowest uh, uh, cost. Is it the cost is lowest or the net realizable value is lowest? Whichever is lowest, that's that's what you're going to use for. Uh, valuation of your inventory and entering it in your balance sheet. So let's say item A, 
The net realizable value for item A is disposal uh, sales of 16 minus disposal cost of two, which is $14. But you actually paid for that $12. So which one is lowest? Is cost lower or net realizable value low? So obviously looks like cost is lower. So lower of cost or net uh, or ne uh, net realizable value. $12 is the best because it's the lowest. You're gonna choose that, okay? Okay, so that's uh, for item A, but how about item B? Item B, your cost is 22, but your net realizable value is 24 minus five. 24 minus five is 19. Cost is 22. Which one is lowest? NRV is lowest, so you're gonna choose that. So your uh, lower of cost or NRV becomes $19. That's what you're gonna use to value it, uh, to uh, put a value on that uh, item B in your balance sheet. Uh, item C, the cost is $17, but expected sales at this moment is 19 with a $2 disposal cost. So 19 minus two is 17. 17 equals to 17. So whichever they are same, so to just take 17 and that's your LC NRV, lower of cost or net realizable value. Item D, item D, your cost is $42. Expected sales at this moment is about $60 and disposal cost is around $6. So 60 minus six is 54, 54, is much higher than cost. So you go with the cost. Cost is good. That's your LC NRV. Item E, the cost is $32. Expected sales is 40 minus six, which is $34. So 34 compared to 32, you go with the cost. Cost is lower. So that will be your uh, dollar amount you're gonna use for your valuation. Item F, <clears throat> it's $18 cost, expected sales is 24, disposal cost is seven. So 24 minus seven, that gives you $17 NRV and the cost is 18. So you're gonna go with uh, uh, $17 NRV as a uh, lowest, of cost or NRV calculation. Okay, so far so good. Uh, let's go to problem two. Let's see what's going on over there. At the year end of 2018, company um, has 8,000 units on hand at a weighted average cost of $13 per item, okay? Sales for the year were at $16 per item. Resellers cost Anco on average $4 per unit. Okay, so that's the disposal. And sales is 16. Okay, uh, what is the company's ending inventory applying LCM, lower of cost or market? Uh, lower of cost or market or uh, NRV? net realizable value is the same thing. Lower of cost or market, LCM or LC NRV is the same thing. Technically LCM is the older name because previously market was calculated a little bit differently. Now we are just using NRV. So lower of cost or market, when we say that, that means we are referring to LC NRV. <clears throat> okay, so net realizable value. Expected sales is 16, it's given in here. Disposal cost is $4, okay? So that gives us $12 NRV. The cost is 13, so we're gonna go with NRV and that will be our valuation, $12. If the loss is not significant enough to warrant disclosure to the income statement, what year-end journal entry does Anco record. So if inventory uh, is uh, 
if the loss is not, not significant, you can um, debit the cost of goods sold. So here we have 8,000 units on hand. And we bought it for $13, but now we are going to value that by $12, right? So that means $1 per unit, we're gonna record as a loss on inventory valuation per NRV, LC NRV. Okay, so that 8,000 times $1, uh, gonna go in the cost of goods sold if it's not significant amount and it's not gonna mess up the cost of goods sold uh, dollar amount. That means if the cost of goods sold is a very big number, $8,000 not, it's not gonna do like significant issue on that, make sense? So it's not gonna mess up the gross profit ratio. You know what's the gro gross profit ratio? Gross profit ratio is sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit, right? And that gross profit ratio is uh, gross profit divided by sales. That means for every $1 of sales, how much gross profit the company is generating. If the cost of goods sold, it's a big number by adding another 8,000 to it. So cost of goods sold not gonna get hurt gross profit ratio not going to get hurt. So we're going to do it, no problem. But if it's significant, then it's another story. But so if uh, it's not significant, we just debit cost of goods sold at year end, okay? And we credit allowance to reduce inventory to market. And that's a T account, we called it allowance T account. Allowance to reduce inventory to market. Uh, if you don't like to use allowance to reduce inventory to market, the other option is use the just credit inventory. That means reducing inventory. So cost of goods sold goes up $8,000. That's a debit. And inventory goes down. That's a credit $8,000. Now you might say, okay, what's the difference? Why do you put inventory or why do you decide to put allowance? If you like to create a T account called allowance to reduce inventory to market, that means next year, if you have any recovery of this inventory for any chance, by any chance it has been recovered, then you can take it out of the allowance T account and uh, increase your, uh, you know, take it out of cost of goods sold and uh, take it out of allowance. However, if you don't use allowance T account and you credit inventory at this moment, then it's fine. In next coming years, if there is any recovery of this loss, there will be no uh, reversal. It, it's just gonna be one-time adjustment forever if you credit inventory. But if you credit allowance to reduce inventory to market, that will be a contra account to inventory. Makes mm -hmm. sense? It's a it's an allowance. It's a it's an account that kind of sitting there to provide you a chance to recover in next year or year after that in case there is any form of recovery. But if you think this is a permanent uh, loss on the valuation, then just you can straightforward just credit uh, inventory case close so the journal entry will be cost of goods sold debit inventory credit if the market value of the inventory increases in the following year can onco recognize the recovery if after recording a loss the inventory recovers some of its value the lcnrv rule does not permit recognizing the recovery unless the allowance account is used, which is this case, like that. In which case, a uh, loss recovery may be recognized up to the amount of previous write down of inventory. That means you're gonna reverse this. Let's say next year, if you got some recovery, up to $8,000, you can recognize rec recovery and you can just reverse this journal entry. That means debit allowance and 
uh, credit uh, cost of goods sold. But that's only if there is a recovery, okay? But if you credit inventory here, you cannot reverse this. It's permanent, one time done, and that's it. So cost of goods sold goes up and inventory will be credited and inventory goes down permanently, okay? So let's look at another problem. The company has the following inventory, electronic or electric division, hardware division and plumbing. Um, electric division has few type of inventory things. In a real life, like hundreds of this type of things, but in this problem, just three. Uh, hardware, again, three items, and plumbing, three items. Units on hand at the end of the year, because they close the doors and for the whole night, they start counting the inventory on hand, and they came up with these numbers. 35 light fixtures, 12 bulbs, uh, uh, GFIs, 20 units, hardware, uh, screws. We have 20 screws. We have spacers, nails, and all those type of things. So we know what we have. And we know the cost, okay? But we have to calculate NRV. NRV is calculated by estimated sales minus disposal cost. And we did that calculation and we got these numbers, okay? Now, what is the company's ending inventory applying LCNRV by item? So you have option to do item by item, group by group. So here we are doing by item. Okay, so we go one by one. The cost for item is 35 times 70. That's the cost, 2,450. But NRV is 35 times 65. That's 2,275. And you do the same thing. Bulbs are 12 times 10, that's 120. And 12 times 11, that's 132. GFIs are 20 times 100, that's 2000. 20 times 99, that's 1980. And you keep doing that all the way down. So you know what the cost is, you know what the NRV is, and then compare item by item. So for Let's go to this line. Which one is lowest? NRV is lowest, take that. Let's go to the next line. Next item. Which one is lowest? Ball 120 is lowest, take that. GFIs, which one is lowest? NRV is lowest, take that. Screws, choose, choose the lowest. Spacers, choose the lowest. Nails, choose the lowest. Traps, choose the lowest. So now we have all these lowers, right? And if you go all the way down, you will have $7,498 of inventory based on LCNRV calculation. However, in reality, your cost was $7,929, right? So that means you end up by having a write down of how much? $431, that's your write down. And what is the journal entry for this write down? You have a journal entry, something like that. Debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory, okay? Or credit allowance to reduce inventory to market. Again, you have two options. Do you like to use allowance or you like to use inventory? If you use inventory, it will be a permanent write down if you use allowance, then next year you might recover, if any. In general, I like to just credit inventory, write it down, and you know get the job done. Okay. This is item by item. Just so you know, if you use item by item, you have the highest chance of writing down big dollar amount, okay? So item by item, uh, 
you have the highest chance of write down the big dollar amount. Uh, let's go to the next option. If you don't like to use item by item, you have to say which one you are using in your financial uh, annual report. If you are a big publicly traded companies and uh, uh, someone is auditing you, right? In, in your an annual report, you have to say, how do you conduct your LCR NRV? Are you doing item by item or you are doing uh, by group? So, Let's go by, by group. In electric, we have three items. The cost is here, NRV is here, and we add up all the cost for electric, ends up to be 4,570, and we add up all the NRVs, it's 4,387. Which one is lowest? NRV is lowest, 4,387, choose that. So you do group by group. The next group, again, list all the costs, list all the NRVs, add them up, and then compare the difference. Which one is lowest? Cost is lowest, take that, 376. For plumbing, again, same thing, list the cost, list the NRV, compare the total cost of plumbing group by NRV of plumbing group and choose the lowest, which is in this case, uh, NRV is lowest. So we're gonna choose that. <clears throat> then add them up, add them up. It gets you a number and that number you compare to the total inventory. Total inventory is 7,929, remember that? Yeah, that's what you have in your current inventory balance 7,929 but because your NRV is lowest here so you have to say 7,929 minus 7,570 so you're going to write down how much 3,59 you see still you are writing down but you are not writing down that much compared to item by item why because in group by group some of these groups are kind of you know, uh, getting low, a little bit less write down. Uh, some groups maybe get a little bit more write down, but some groups get less write down. And that will end up by having overall less write down. Okay, um, so let's go to um, compare the uh, entire inventory. So if you like to go, um, Entire inventory, uh, so you, again, list every uh, uh, item, okay, e every item, the cost all the way, and then uh, all the uh, NRV cost all the way, and which one is lowest? 7,929 comp compared to 7,580. So ob obviously, if you are doing entire inventory, then you get 7580. And entire inventory, it is it has much less chance to write down compared to uh you know item by item and compared to group by group. So if you use entire inventory as your policy to do LCNRV then you have the lowest chance of writing down. As you see here, uh, 7,929 compared to NRV of entire inventory, you only need to write down 349. This is the lowest possible outcome compared to group by group or item by item. So item by item, you have to do it every line item by item like that, right? You see that? Group by group, you go just every group by every group. <clears throat> see, group by group. In entire inventory, you're not gonna do anything in between. You're just gonna add up all your costs and you say, okay, I have 7,929 based on NRV, entire inventory, 
my NRV cost is right here. And I'm going to compare that. And I'm going to enter it right there. And that's my new inventory. And compared to the cost, I have to write down 349 only, much less than group by group and much less than item by item. Well, let's do one more. A physical inventory of company is taken on December 31st, reveals the following. They have games, they have videos, um, units on hand, cost per unit, the NRV calculation, which is uh, estimated sales minus estimated disposal cost, ends up to be 24 and 24. For video DVD is six dollars and Blu-ray is twelve dollars. Okay, calculate ending inventory applying LCNRV to the entire inventory. Entire inventory that means you have to go with the cost and add them up. Total thirteen thousand seven fifty, and then you calculate the NRV twenty six times twenty four, twenty three times twenty four. 7 times 6, 11 times 12. And then add them up. As you see, entire inventory has the lowest chance to write down. And here is you're going to use NRV 13,200 as your final answer. And that's your LCNRV. If you want to use um, uh, let's say the uh, group by group. So you have games group and you have video group. Games group, you have the cost, add them up. You have the NRV, add them up. Then compare this group games with the other NRV cost. Which one is lowest? Choose the lowest. Then for the video, Again, you have the cost and NRV. Compare that. Which one is lowest? NRV is lowest. Take that. Then add up your 10,800 plus 2,400. And that's 13,200. That's your LC NRV. As you see here, still you have to write down. Compared to 13,750, you have to write down 550 bucks. If you do group by group, you still, again, write down 550 bucks. Same thing. That's your write down. Um, how about uh, item by item? Okay, if you do item by item, 78 compared to 72, 7200 is lowest. 3,450 3, compared to 3,600, 3,450 is lowest. That's the cost. DVDs, 1400 compared to 1200. So 1200 is lowest. We're going to use that. 1100 by 1200. So could the cost of 1100 is the lowest. We're going to use that. So because of that, we end up by having inventory of 12,950. And how much is our inventory right now showing? 13,750. As you see, this is the highest amount of write down that you can do. That's about $800 right now compared to 550, 550 here. So $800 right down, 13750 minus 12950. That's $800 right down. That's the highest write down. And why is that? Because your company chose to do item by item. Okay. And you need to decide which one you're going to use and you have to stick to it. You cannot just say, oh, this year I like item by item. Next year I like group by group. You have to stick to one thing, one policy and use it. So you can have a comparable balance sheet year after year. Make sense? You cannot just jump around and make, change your policies left and right. Okay, so again, that's the LCR NRV. And how do you calculate the cost? Compared to NRV, there are three methods. 
either item by item, group by group, or entire inventory compared to entire inventory. Okay, so let's go to the last part of this section, I think. Yes. Okay, on October 1st of 2018, Your company signs a $10,000 purchase commitment for goods to be delivered on March 5th of next year. At the year end of 2018, the estimated value of the goods on order is $8,000. Okay, let me tell you something. For example, companies like McDonald's, they don't buy a potato at the last moment. They order potato like a purchase commitment from the um let's say farm farmer and so ahead of time they already know how much is the cost of potato and based on that they value the sales price for for uh, french fries and uh, they have a fixed and reliable uh, calculation that how much the potato will cost and how much french fries will be sold now this company, when they sign this uh, uh, commitment, it's good, but by end of the year, uh, they have to see what's going on with this commitment. Is there anything that they need to recognize in regards to loss, let's say. So present the journal to reflect the purchase commitment at the year end of 2018. At the year end of 2018, the estimated value of this purchase commitment the market value is 8,000. So it's cheaper. Let's say that potato is cheaper by end of the year in the market. Uh, they signed for $10,000, but now it's cheaper. So that's an estimated loss on purchase, purchase commitment of $2,000 that they need to recognize. And <clears throat> because they didn't pay anything yet, so estimated liability on purchase commitment will be $2,000. So we recognize a liability and we also recognize a loss at this, at this moment. If on March 1st of 2019, at the time of delivery, the market value of goods is $7,000, that means even lower, present the journal entry to record this change. Okay, so we got the inventory. It might be potato, it might be t-shirt, it might be whatever. You got it. Okay, then recognize that inventory for whatever it is the market value at that exact minute. So inventory at that exact minute on March 5th, it is $7,000. That's what you debit your inventory. Okay, good. But remember, you recognize an estimated li uh, liability of 2000 here as a credit. You debit that, so you close that liability. However, we have another $1,000 of loss that, again, we need to recognize. So we debit the loss on purchase commitment for the new year. This is, remember, this loss is the balance of the T account at that moment. Yes, I know I have a loss in here too, but that loss is already closed at the end of 2018. Remember, all revenues are closed, all expenses are closed. Yes, so this is closed. So but for the new year, I know the T account shows zero, but we're gonna debit that T account for another thousand dollars. And this loss will be reflected in the 2019 income statement. This loss was reflected in 2018 income statement. So loss on purchase commitment for additional $1,000. Finally, we paid the $10,000 that we had the commitment and we signed that purchase commitment, right? So we paid that. So we knew that we are paying for something that worth less at that moment. But guess what? We have an agreement. We have to pay 10,000. Okay. 
For problem six, it says, on November 6 of 2018, your company signs a $10,000 purchase commitment for goods to be delivered on February 15th of 2019. At the year end of 2018, the estimated value of goods is $7,500, okay? So looks like we have an estimated loss already. So what is the journal entry at December 31st? So on December 31st, we recognize before we closing our book and prepare our financial statements. We need to record that we have a loss on purchase commitment of $2,500 during 2018 year. And because we didn't pay yet, so we're gonna recognize estimated liability of $2,500. So loss will be recognized in 2018 and liability will be recognized in 2018. Loss goes in the income statement and liability goes in the balance sheet. On February 15 of 2019, the market value of goods is $8,000. So before it was 7,000, remember on December 31st was 7,500. Now at the time of delivery, it went to 8,000. What is the journal entry to record the impact of change in market value at the year end? So first of all, because it's $8,000, guess what? We're gonna get inventory of $8,000. That's what it goes in the TA account. Also, because we pay, uh, we have a commitment, so we have to pay $10,000 no matter what. So that's a credit. So inventory will increase, that's a debit. Cash goes out, that's a credit. We have also an estimated liability on the credit side here, you see that? that we need to close that. So we debit that to close that estimated liability. However, because the market value went up from 7,500 and December 31st to 8,000 on February 15th. So we have a recovery on loss of purchase commitment or so-called gain, right? Same thing, gain on purchase commitment or recovery of loss on purchase commitment. This is more like recovery of loss compared to gain. Gain is like you have actual gain. We don't have actual gain because we, it's still not more than 10,000. So we don't have actual gain, but at least we have something that we can call it recovery of loss. So here, recovery on loss of purchase commitment, that's $500 that we recover, <clears throat> okay? So that's the journal entry. Let's say on February 2019, the market value goes to 11,000. Then what? This is extra that I entered here, okay? Uh, just to have a little bit more idea. So let's say the market value went to 11,000. Then what? If the market value went to 11,000, then inventory will be recognized as 11,000. Got it? Now that, whatever it is, t-shirt, potato, whatever it is. So that's inventory, 11,000. Um, estimated liability on purchase commitment, that's this one, that we need to recover that and close that, right? So we have to close it. So we're gonna close that, that's a debit. Also cash gonna go 10,000 no matter what because we have a purchase commitment, right? Okay, so this will be a plug it in situation. You have to just plug this number in, which is 11,000 plus 2,500 on the debit side, less 10,000 on the credit side and enter. And that's what you plug it in, 3,500. 3,500 will be recovery on loss of purchase commitment. Okay, recovery on loss of purchase commitment. That means so-called gain, got it? So. Uh, that will be part of, uh, you know, in the income statement, we have sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit, gross profit minus operating expenses, which is selling mm -hmm. expenses, general administrative expenses gives you income from operation. And below that, 
you have other revenues or gains, expenses or incomes. So uh, this way it goes right below income from operation as other revenues and gains, and that will show recovery and loss of purchase commitment, 3,500, as other gain or loss, remember? Below income from operation. Okay? And that's it. That's the last part of the uh, inventory book. Okay?